Okay, for constant velocity, in its most basic form, we use velocity equals distance over time. Okay, this is the first equation that we learned for velocity, but it only works when we're moving at constant speed. It does not work if we're speeding up or slowing down. Okay, if we start speeding up or slowing down, we have to use our kinematics equations, which have acceleration in them. Okay, because acceleration means we're, we're speeding up or we're slowing down. So this equation only works when it's moving at constant speed. So uniform speed here, that means that it's constant, right? For something to be uniform, it means it's the same throughout. Time has to be in seconds. And more specifically, our units just have to match. So since we give our velocity in meters per second, that means that if we do distance over time, our distance needs to be measured in meters and our time has to be measured in seconds. Okay, does that make sense? So we want to know the, the distance it's covered in meters, so it makes the most sense for us to just convert that 12 minutes to seconds. So how would we go from minutes to seconds? Yeah, that's right. Multiply 12 by 60. Um, this is before we're using kinematics equations at all. So this is just using the equation velocity over time. So this is going back even further. Okay, so here is our time. It's in seconds, 720 seconds. Our velocity is 15. So I'm going to say velocity equals distance over time. And how do I solve for this variable right here? Multiply those two together. And I get 10,800 meters. Okay, so when we say uniform speed or constant speed, that's the only time that we can use this equation right here. Okay, if we're speeding up or slowing down at all, we have to use our kinematics equations. Okay? I'll give you every equation that you need, yes. Yeah, velocity on a position versus time graph. Position versus time. Our slope tells us velocity. Okay, because a slope, listen, a slope on this graph is giving us a distance, a certain amount of distance divided by a certain amount of time. Okay, so distance over time tells us velocity. Okay, so... This says, what is the displacement at 20 seconds? So displacement at 20 seconds means we're going to find time at 20 seconds. And we're going to just find where is it located at that point. Because this is distance on the, on the y-axis and this is time. So it's displacement at 20 seconds is 40 meters. That's all we're doing. We're not having to solve anything on a position versus time graph. We're just telling where it's located at that point by reading the graph. Okay, that's it. Velocity from 15 to 40 seconds. So what do I need to be solving for on my graph here? Good. So 15 seconds is here. 40 seconds is here. I need to find the slope of that line during that time. Okay? That's right. That's right. Change in Y over change in X. Okay, so our final y value is negative 40. Our initial y value is positive 60. Our final x value is 40, and our final y value is 15. The first one's x, the second one's y. This is like the first, uh, this is like the final, and this is the initial, but y is on the top and x is on the bottom. Yeah, but both of the y's are the We're going from negative 40 to 60. X That's our. Um, y2 and Y1 are on the top. X2 and X1 are on the bottom. This is the second, 
I, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're asking. This is like... X1 is fine, and X2 is <coughs> No. I'd like to answer your question, but I don't know what. Okay, so final point is always the one that's furthest to the right on the graph. Those are our twos, right? Those are our twos, okay. Those are the twos. Okay, sorry. Yeah. First, farthest to the left is always our ones. Farthest to the right is always our twos. Is that about it? Okay, sorry. All right. Um, so final is negative 100 over 25, which gives us a slope of negative 4. Okay. So that means we're moving negative 4 meters per second during this time, right? Backwards at 4 meters per second. Distance traveled from 10 to 15 seconds. So distance traveled from 10 to 15 seconds right here. How much distance are we traveling? None. None. Okay. On a position versus time graph, a straight horizontal line means we are not moving. Okay. But on a velocity versus time graph, that means we have the... That's right, cruise control set. We're constant speed. Okay? Position versus time graph. Is that okay? How would you find the distance from like 15 to 20? Um, I mean, from 15 seconds to 20 seconds, uh, we moved backward 20 meters. You know what I'm saying? We just read the y axis. So if I wanted to know from 15 seconds to 20 seconds, how much distance did we cover? Right, we went from 60 meters to 40 meters, so we went backwards 20 meters. That wouldn't be the a type of a question I would ask, but that's how you do it. Okay? Okay, on a velocity versus time graph, velocity is on the y-axis, time is still on the x. So in a velocity versus time graph, what does the slope tell us? Velocity over time usually tells us what? Acceleration. Good, acceleration. So the slope of a velocity versus time graph tells us the acceleration during that time. This is the graph where we can get a little bit confused when we cross the x-axis, right? Here, for all of this graph, we are moving in the forward direction, right? Because we're above the x-axis. But this is one where we start crossing, if we start crossing the x-axis, then we start moving in the backward direction, Okay, so this graph doesn't show anything moving in the backward direction, but you do need to be aware of um, this is the types of graphs where if you cross the x-axis, then now we start to move in the opposite direction, so things kind of change a little bit, okay? Um, all right, so velocity from, 10, from 5 to 10 seconds, um, that is here to here. What's our velocity from 5 to 10 seconds? Or 30. Yeah, just 30. That's it. All we're doing is reading the graph, right? It's moving at a constant speed during that time. Okay, so if we walk through the motion of this graph, we're speeding up in the positive direction, we're cruise control. What's happening here? Slowing down. Slowing down. Good. Are we moving forward or backward? Forward. forward still. Okay, here, what do we have going on? Good. Constant speed. And then what's coming, right, happening right there? Yeah, we're slowing down and coming to a stop, theoretically, right? Because we're stopping right here at zero. But yes, good. So from 5 to 10 seconds, we have a velocity of 30 meters per second, and that's constant, right? That doesn't require any math. That's just reading the graph. Displacement from 15 to 20 seconds. Do we remember how to find displacement from a velocity versus time graph? That's right. That's right. We're going to break it into shapes, and we're going to find the area of the graph, okay? We have to be really careful on these that we stop at the x-axis, Right? We break it into the, uh, we stop at the x-axis because if anything is below the x-axis, that means we're moving backwards during that time. So we have to pay attention to that part of it. Um, but we stop at the x-axis. So this side would be 5 and this side would be 20, which means during that time we traveled a, a total displacement of 100 meters. Right? That's it. We're finding the area of that section of the graph. That's right. If we wanted to find the area of the whole graph, yeah, we'd split it into a lot of different shapes. Is it going to be any that go positive? Yeah, there could. So if it would go below the x-axis for part of it, you know, let's say this next part went below the x-axis, we'd find this and whatever, you know, like, let's say it was negative 20, we would just subtract that from our total. 
And we would do the little shape of pose for even the entire thing. That's right. We would just be finding this little section of it right here. What's that rule? Um, on the graph itself, you mean? Well, why are we solving inside of that whole thing and then outside of that one? Oh, if the line were to continue right here on the graph, you know what I'm saying? We only find it to the x-axis. So instead of finding this whole thing right here, we're going to find if it's from 25 seconds to 30 seconds, you know what I'm saying? We're, we're making that our part on the x-axis right there. So you go with whatever time it is, and you make the shape of that. So if it was 25 to 30 seconds, then that would be one side of our shape, and then we'd make the shape from there. Okay, do you want to look at a different graph that goes below the x-axis? Okay, we can do one like that. Okay, um, next one, what's the distance traveled from 5 to 15? So here to here, right, 5 to 15 seconds. So is this a shape that we can do easily? No, so we want to break it up into, yeah, probably three. Okay. Do we need to solve it, or do you just you get the idea at least? Okay, that's fine. As long as we get the idea, that's fine. We don't need to go through the math part of it. Okay, um, acceleration from 20 to 25. How do we solve acceleration from 20 to 25? We do the slope, okay? So to solve our slope, we would say y final, which is 0, minus y initial, which is 20, over x final, which is 25, minus x initial, which is 20. So negative 20 over 5, negative 4 meters per second squared. Okay? So this is like y2, y1, x2, x1. Okay. We'll look at another graph here um, after we after we finish some kinematic stuff. Okay, a ball is thrown upward. It reaches its peak height in 0.94 seconds. With what velocity was the ball initially thrown, and how high does it go? So there's a couple things that we need to remember uh, if, with our kinematics equations, okay? First of which, when we are solving vertical kinematics, we have one variable that never changes, okay? We have one variable for vertical kinematics that never changes. Does anyone know what that one variable is? D-I. Okay, D-I is always zero, but what? Acceleration. So vertical acceleration is always what? 9.8. Good. 9.8, but we got to put that negative on there. Okay, because it's pulling in the downward direction always. Distance initial is, yes, most of the time, 99% of the time is zero. Okay? So in this question, it asks us two different things, so we need two answers here. With what velocity was it initially thrown? What variable does that mean we're going to solve for? V I. V I. Okay, and how high does it go, which means we're solving for df, right, our final displacement. We're going to have to do both of those. Can we solve for both of those variables in one equation? No. no. Okay. So there's one other thing that we need to be able to pick out from this problem before we can start using any equations or anything else. Does anyone know what it is? Velocity. Good. Velocity final, and it is... Zero, and so why is it zero? 
That's right. At its peak height, it's always going to stop there before it comes back down. And this is a problem where it's going to be the same going up as it does coming down, right? Not that we're worried about super, um, not we're worried about time or anything, but it says it takes us, to, it takes us nine, ninety-four hundredths of a second um, to reach its peak height. So this means this time is only on the way up. Okay, so you don't have to divide it by two. You don't have to do anything like that. Your time right there is taking on the way up. So we can really use which equation to solve for initial velocity? We can use the first one because we have final velocity, acceleration, and time. Okay, so let's do that. Final velocity is zero. Initial velocity is what we're solving for, negative 9.8, and time is 0.94 seconds. Okay, so to get velocity initial by itself, we would add that to the other side. So we know our initial velocity is 9.212 meters per second. Okay, and then solving for how high it goes, what kinematic equation should we probably use? Does it really make a difference? Yeah, it's just going to be higher. Every variable now. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't really make a difference. Okay, so pick one of those and go ahead and solve for final displacement. Doesn't matter which one you use, pick one of them, solve for final displacement. This is still a velocity versus time. We want to find total displacement, which means we need to find the area of the graph. So we need to find this whole area and this whole area, okay, because it stops at 9 seconds. So to do that, we're going to break this into two triangles and a rectangle, right? And then here our time stops at 9 seconds. So we're going to stop at the x-axis, and we're going to find that displacement as well. Okay? So we would take 3 times 8, 8 times 2, and 8 times 2 divided by 2, and then 2 and negative 8. Okay? We would add all those together. The first one we take 3 times 8, which is 24, divided by 2. Why am I dividing by 2? It is a triangle. Good. So 12 plus 8 times 2 is 16 plus 8 because 8 times 2 is 16 divided by 2. And then over here I've got a negative side, so I'm moving backward during that time. So I need to subtract 8 from that final one. Okay, so 12 plus 16 is 28 meters.